contribution, Victor. We appreciate. I know that that uh, Messi has been itching to say something. She's a digital um, strategist. Um, she's um, an agile expert, and uh, I'm sure she's been eager to say something. I'm happy that um, while Michael and um, Victor were speaking, they actually touched on. Um, the micro businesses, because there are some people in that space that would want to know how they can actually make use of even innovation uh, technology and all that to improve their businesses. And you already mentioned about people doing transfers to you, people making use of WhatsApp to reach out uh, about their businesses and all that, which is fine. Uh, Messi, Messi, can you hear us? Very clearly. Okay, um, I, I think culture. Um, as been noted as a relevant factor in developing an innovative mindset for an organization. Um, I don't know, what's, what's your take on that? And how can companies actually nurture a culture of innovation, especially um, the micro businesses and um, considering the, level, the, the, the numerous opportunities that I've actually mentioned. I know a number of people are looking at it. Okay, how can I take on this, um, these opportunities? Um, what, what skills do I need to improve on? What, um, what, what capabilities do I need to, 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 to gather? Um, of course, they need to go to the consultant, but even before they go to the consultant, they need to dissect their business and they need to be able to tell the consultants, um, like you and I, um, what um, the issues are so that you can then guide them appropriately. So I'd like you to shed some more light in that space. Two things, is that's too prone, you understand? Um, culture um, uh, as, an, as a tool in making companies have an innovative mindset, and also um, how companies can get more agile with regards to um, leveraging on um, innovation and, um, and digitalization, especially in the SME space. First, thank you. first I want to talk on this one. I want to say thank you so much for the invitation. Um, and um, But before I touch on that, I'd like to share this quote by J.K. Rowling. And it says, anything is possible if you've got the nerve. Frank, please, can you stop on muting yourself? Exactly. There's, <laughs> there are disruptions. Frank, you are muting yourself. Can you stop disrupting, please? Yes, thank you. J.K. Rowling says, uh, a British author says that anything is possible if you've got the nerve. What is innovation first and foremost? Yeah, it's change. Change has happened. And Nigeria is a very peculiar country because sometimes when we speak, we speak from an exposed point of view, not from the reality of who we are and where we are as a country. Number one, I think the one of the greatest damage that they've done to us, Africans, and I come home to Nigeria, is that entitlement mentality. I have to get palliative, I have to get this, I have to get that. Yes, offering free services is actually good, but remember, it's not your entitlement. Zoom is a case study for me for today. Zoom started off offering free services where you can use it. They never anticipated COVID-19. When COVID-19 happened, their system could not take the capacity of what happened to them. From 10 million users, they shot within a week to 200 million users. That is unprecedented. It took a really hit on their platform. So that is part of us having our mindset change. One of my goals as an entrepreneur, <laughs> I hear you. Thank you for the ad. I hear you, Michael. But one of the things I want us to know this as entrepreneurs speaking to Nigerians, speaking to our problem, I'll take from where Nemeka tipped off from is data. If you don't understand who your customers are, you don't understand where your customers are coming from, how to effectively engage with those customers is a challenge. The banks, the fintech, they create solutions, not necessarily factoring in. I love the example of the Mpesa um, structure. When they started Mpesa, their goal from set was not the middle class or the upper class. It was targeting the locals. So fintechs, we come up with solutions in Nigeria, in Africa. We want to all go fancy television, 
We want to speak big, big English. We want to Absolutely. make projections. So this is where the disconnect is, is the marketing strategy. I'll tell you the truth today. Nigeria is loaded with talent, abundant of talent. But the problem is, is our representation of this talent that is the disconnect. Our people today, they will say internet is very expensive. They are watching YouTube, home video. They are watching entertainers. They are spending money, but not in the right quarters. So as a result, when it now comes to application of their business, they can't apply that same resources that they have applied. I've gone off track. So for us to make, to adapt innovation, to adapt changes to what is happening, first and foremost, we must understand our dynamic, that our people are not there. We are not like London. We are not like America. We need to start speaking. When we speak to our people, like we are speaking to those type of people, otherwise we'll have a situation of once the opening was, People, they are saying social distancing, they were standing on top of each other because they went to get into the bank. So the banks failed because they didn't know who they are real people. And these are the people that have physical cash that want to put their monies in the bank. But it's not because they failed. It's the marketing communication that was not effective enough to say, come, the banks are shut down. There's lockdown. Start using, like uh, Michael has clearly said, start using, it's only Ecobank that kept promoting it's only Echo Bank that kept promoting, use our, what was it called, the code, to do transfer. US, USSD. Yeah, the USSD to do transfer for free. So you can see there's a disconnect in terms of the information that we share to the, communi uh, to, to the public. So these are the things that we need to factor. We don't have data. Our data is obsolete. We are relying on the West to analyze our data. I did an anal analysis of my data as a startup. The kind of data I personally am sitting on top. It's mind blowing because I knew that I needed to understand our behavior so that I can be able to offer services that is still made and bespoke to our people. So this is where the disconnection is. This is when you don't have a, an effective digital marketing strategy that you can adopt to your business then it takes a real hit and it starts with our mind. Anyway, I wanted to say this. Of a truth, they say ladies first, <laughs> after men. Thank you, Femi, for that to me. Okay. Thank you very much, Mercy. That was very, very insightful. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure we've picked a number of things from, from that. Um, you, you, you mentioned um, a lot about data. You mentioned about the fact that um, even some of the large um, corporations, the banks and all that um, seem to have a lot of data with them, but um, this is not um, probably being um, analyzed uh, well. I mean, we hear about big data. It's another big, I mean, it's another buzzword nowadays. And then we talk about the five V's of big data. Um, you have a lot of volume of data. You have varieties, whether it's in um, numerics, it's in images, it's in figures, um, the frequency when you talk about the velocity, and then of course the veracity. I believe that um, all these add up to the value eventually, but it's it's shocking to me that it seems like even with all these data that um, most of the large corporations have, as has been demonstrated by some of the banks, it is not yet properly analyzed. What no. what is missing? I'll tell you what is missing. Victor, uh, Victor I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. I can see you itching. I'll come back to you, Victor. Messi, let me. Tell, I like to hear from you. Let me tell you the kind of data we gather is email and telephone number. You can't know a behavior of a user that way. I'll give you an example. I wish I can project my screen. It's a good data. It's very solid data, but it can't really help you in terms of knowing their demographic. I'm a startup. I'm trying to do business differently because I'm in a different environment. Banks are sitting on millions of data which they have enough. I'll give you an example. Let me de um, deviate a little bit. I went to the population ministry. I wanted to get birth certificate for one of my children. And on getting there, the fascination for me was the kind of information they gather. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. unprecedented. They ask for your local government. They ask for your local government, where you come from, where you stay. They ask for information that is so heavy. So what are they doing with those information? 
okay, why is there no integration with the BVN and population? Why can you yeah, not the all those and all that? Why can the banks not leverage on the population, which is sitting on top of data? They collect paper data. They lock it up in an archive. For instance, they touch up the place. Nobody has the information. Then you expect a we the West, because for instance, they say that the penetration of mobile device into Africa, it's 94%, if not more. And this is as of 2019. But that's not the case. This is an example of what they are calculating. In my house, we have over 17 devices. So that's for one household. That data is over bloated. It's not the true picture of what is happening in Africa. Because you may say you have recorded 17 devices in one location, in one household, but that doesn't mean the general Nigerian populace has that device on their hand. So that's the problem that we have. Our data are not well interpreted, and those that are interpreting, go. I challenge you to go on Nigerian um, Statistics Bureau. I can't remember what it's called. Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, you, MBS. Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, you will see data in two, from, I mean, the latest data you find is 2017. The only thing that is current is on the budget. In a country of 200 and something million people, we don't even know the figure. So that is the fundamental problem that we have. For you to know who your customer is, you must have data on those customers. So we need a mindset shift from the local to the, um, to the state government, to the federal government, to multinationals that are representing us. For instance, Nine Mobile, MTN, they all have data. What are they doing with those data? Exactly. Who has visibility to those data? What are we analyzing? I am sorry. This is, I'm very no. passionate about data. Because no, no, you have to be. Have, so the problem have to be. is we cannot make informed decision until you can say, I know who my customers are to the nitty gritty. I know what time they are online. I know what they are doing. So because I know that, I know how to serve them bespoke needs that will meet their, um, that will be able to help them deliver results at the end of the day. Sorry, I spoke for too long. Thank you, thank God. you very much. That was, that was, that was, that was um, very um, Femi, 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 please. I, I, I need 30 seconds to, to, to almost try to, me, almost try to disagree. Hold on, just for 30 seconds. Hold on, Michael. Can I take Victor, please, before, so okay. that I can take I it together. I think Victor probably is, um, probably okay. on the same tone with, um, Messi.